Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2018 Jeep Wrangler JK Unlimited, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Demco base plate kit. But before we do that, why don't we check it out and make sure uh, that this is gonna work for you. So before we get too carried away, kind of checking out the base plate and seeing what it's about, I figured it'd be useful just to kind of refresh yourselves and touch base on the five main components that we're gonna to need to flat tow our Jeep down the road in the first place. All the main components are gonna consist of five different parts. So the first thing is gonna be your base plate. And what this is gonna do is provide you with a solid and reliable connection point. That way you can hook your tow bar up. The tow bar is gonna be the second component and that's gonna be the physical link that actually connects the front of your Jeep to the back of your motorhome. The third main component will be safety cables and those are pretty straightforward. Uh, those are gonna be there in the event of an unlikely disconnect, they're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main component will be tow bar wiring. And what that's gonna do is transfer the lighting signals from the back of your coach to the back of your Jeep, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main component will be a supplemental braking system. And what that'll do is apply the brakes in your Jeep whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome, helping bring you to a more predictable and complete stop. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and check out the base plate. So this is what it's gonna look like whenever you're not hooked up to your motorhome. And I feel like that's important because chances are pretty good you're gonna be you know, unhooked more than you are hooked up. Um, and honestly, I don't think it looks too bad in terms of appearance goes. I mean, just about anything you put on a Jeep accessory wise uh, looks right at home. I feel like that holds true with this setup. Um, there's a lot of base plates available. Some are a little less visible. Some are completely visible. This one kind of falls in the middle. Um, so got a bunch of different choices there. I do like the fact that they actually give you a bracket. Um, that way you can mount up your uh, wiring connector. So it takes a little bit of the guesswork out and you know, having to find different brackets and things like that. So it's a nice addition there. And they also give you some caps, some covers for the end of the base plate. So not only do I think it looks a little bit better, but it's gonna help keep dirt and stuff like that out. Um, I will say if you wanna pick up a backup set, it seems pretty popular. A lot of people are doing that. We do offer these separately too. So it's always an option for you. Uh, one thing I definitely want to touch base on when it comes to these Jeeps is there's so many different sub models and you know so many of them have uh, different bumpers and things like that. Um, that's going to affect what base plate uh, will and won't work with your Jeep. So definitely use our fit guide and pay attention to that. You know, if you have a different bumper or a special type of submodel, make sure to enter that in. And, um, you know, that way you can be certain that this base plate will actually work with the, uh, your particular Jeep. Something that is really important when it comes to a flat toe setup is how easy it's going to be to uh, hook up and disconnect. You know, you don't want something that'll take up a bunch of your time and, and be confusing. Um, this one's really easy to set up. Uh, whenever you're ready to hook up to your motor home, you're just going to remove the dust covers, put them in a place where you won't lose them. And this is going to use removable arms. Okay, so these are going to slide in. Then you'll have these pins. You can kind of lock them in place. Same deal over here. So really not a whole lot to it. You know, it's pretty hard to mess up. And now this will give you that connection point that you're gonna need to hook up your tow bar. So this is gonna work with those eTrailer.com uh, tow bars, as well as the Demco ones. Can also work with other manufacturers like Roadmaster, just to kind of give an example. That's a really popular uh, brand of tow bars. Um, if you have another brand like that, you can always pick up adapter ends. So you'll change the ends out and that'll allow the tow bar to pair up with this particular base plate. So uh, regardless what tow bar you have, chances are really good. You're gonna be able to make it work. 
and the safety chain openings as well. So that's what these are right here. So we kind of talked about those safety cables. Whenever you're ready to hook those up, now these are relatively open. So I have two common, very common ends of safety cables. Not gonna have any issues getting to them. They're not in the way or anything like that. Well, hey guys, we're here with Larry who just brought his vehicle in and his motor home, of course, to get a flat toe set up. So uh, Larry, you kind of mentioned before that you guys did have a trailer dolly and that was always kind of a pain to mess with, wasn't it? Because it was just kind of big in the way. That right, kind of thing. Correct. Cool, Moving awesome. It around, it was, yeah, kind of a pain. Yeah, so um, this way, obviously, we're making that a lot easier for ourselves. Our tow bar is going to be folded up close to the vehicle or the motorhome, I should say, right. making it a lot easier to storage, a lot easier to get out. And of course, when we start taking all this undone, our tabs aren't going to be as gaudy in the front. You know, we're not going to have. And of course, security is always concerned when we're doing anything like this. So nicer that it's a little bit more low key, low profile, which is great. So um, have you ever flat towed before then, no. really? Not ever, no. really? Cool. Um, so, I mean, the concept's pretty simple, right? We're keeping it flat and we're towing it. That's, as the name suggests, um, what we're doing with that, basically, we're eliminating any of that kind of chucking that you might originally see from like dollies and stuff like that, exactly right, because we're keeping it level, which is great. And these arms are going to be locking themselves in for us, and that way the car's going to be basically following right behind your motorhome, okay. especially compared to, like, it's a little different than a trailer, you know what I mean? You always kind of have to watch what it's going to be doing on the back end. This guy just tracks really nice behind the motorhome, makes it a lot easier to drive, especially pulling it in any of our kind of recreational areas. It's do not going to be as a pain. Do these always stay out or do they like yep. piston, articulate so, in and out? So they are going to be locking in place for you, which oh. is great. Now they are going to have a little bit of movement, but especially when you are going to be going to do like unlatch these guys, this is non-binding. Okay. If you compare that to like binding tow bars, basically what ends up happening with those guys is they have a little button that you have to push to release it. What's nice with these, they're not locked in right now because we haven't really pulled it forward, but I'm gonna be able to pull this lever back, pop it, and we're gonna feel that kind of give just like that. And that's basically unbinding itself, making it a lot easier to actually get it undone. So, and kind of talking about that, when we're doing our initial, like once we got everything set up, there are a few little kind of tips and tricks to keep in mind. So the first one's gonna be, as we are pulling out, Luckily for us, we have a lot of little left and rights we're gonna have to make to get out of E-Trailer here. However, say you're at like a, like a campsite, you load it all up, you get it nice and even and lined up. That's also a really nice step we're gonna go over about like getting it set up. But as we're taking off, we're gonna wanna do a little bit of left and right on our steering wheel. And what that's doing for us is actually making sure that these guys are extending their full. Because when it's up happening, right, we're going along the highway, our Jeep's behind us. Yes, we're gonna be applying the brakes because we had that stay and play duo here, which is giving you that brake control, which is great. But what we don't want is one of these arms locking and one of them not. Because what can end up happening there is all that force gets transferred to one arm and then that can end up bending your tow bar. So that's why we do that left to that right action. And we'll go over it later as we get in the motor home as well. But that's because we want to make sure that we are distributing that force between both of the arms. Otherwise, you'd run into that issue that we were just talking about. So, yeah. It's probably important enough after you go a few miles that you should just pull over somewhere and come back here and look? It's never a bad idea always to check, you know, but I think especially once you've done it twice, three oh, times, okay. you're, you're going to feel it and, and you're going to see it too if it's tracking well with you. And it's really not much. I mean, we're talking an eighth on the steering wheel and all that's really doing is getting that extra little extension that we're looking for. Because these are going to naturally extend as we pull. They're going to go to their max length, right? And it's just getting that lock almost in place. So, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a little. Hard to kind of show as we're at a standstill. Okay. But yeah, so why don't we go over a little bit of what we got working with us, right? Okay. So, um, we have ourselves our tow bar actually. So this is the main component, right? You have the Falcon All Terrain here from Roadmaster, which is great. Um, again, we kind of mentioned it, it's non-binding. All that really is, is you're getting this lever action here, making it a lot easier to actually get those binds undone. Okay. Um, like I said before, there's usually a button there on the side, a real pain to get to, it takes a lot of effort, and then you end up getting a lever anyways that you always kind of have to store somewhere. So um, they, the installer is always like, this is the way to go. So that's why we always throw people that way as well. Um, and then we just have, of course, we have a base plate here inside the Jeep. And that's kind of given us our tab extension that we're seeing here. So it's kind of underneath your bumper. And so we have our hook elements here. So our tow bars extend out. And then we're gonna have these little pins that are holding us in place. So, and then one thing that's great about our Falcon here, you do have all this wire housing and your safety cable housing. So a lot of times what you end up seeing is these safety cables just drag on the ground or this umbilical cable drags on the ground and that can lead to wear and tear. Eventually you gotta get them replaced, right? So what's nice about the Falcon, we're gonna be storing that inside here. That's not gonna be in the way. And then of course our safety cables on each side are for safety, right? right. If in case something goes wrong, we wanna make sure our Jeep's not leaving so we can undo those as well. 
And since we're just gonna be working right to left here, this is gonna be our breakaway switch. So if I were to pull this guy right now, we're gonna have, and if it was actually running, what ends up happening there, we're gonna have connection points that actually get made. And since there's nothing blocking that, that's gonna activate your brakes inside your Jeep. So worst case scenario, this thing comes undone, all the rest of the systems fail, you still have this breakaway switch, which is gonna activate your brakes. That way we're not hurting anybody on the road. Okay. That way everybody gets home safe, which is great. So always make sure we are replacing that. And there is just gonna be those two little tabs right there. You just gotta get those guys in place to actually work. Just like so. So making sure that's in place when you are taking when your- When you're driving it, you always leave that in. Oh yeah, 100%. And even when, even when you're not utilizing it, that's just, that's that mechanism. That's the fail safe right there. Exactly. Oh, so we can keep that guy undone and he can just kind of sit right here. And if you wanted to, you know, you can clip him anywhere. That way he doesn't go dangling anywhere you don't need him. Okay. So here's going to be your electrical hookup, right? And so you also have that, I think it's the Demco Stay and Play Duo. Uh -huh. um, so this is basically getting you your brakes. This is getting you your brake control, which is great. And you also have the battery charge line kit, I believe, which right. is keeping our battery actually going because we're still using that battery for our brakes, um, activating um, your actual stay and play as well. Oh, okay. So say you go for six to eight hours on the road somewhere, you get back and now your Jeep's dead. That'd be no good. So that, that charge line kit is basically a trickle charger, utilizing your RV's power, maintaining your battery. Okay. And that way, when you get to your campsite, you got no trouble and your okay. Jeep's ready to go. So pretty simple there. How this guy works, you're gonna have this little notch here at the top. Uh -huh. um, it, if you look on the inside, it's a little deceiving. So an easy way is just making sure that little tab right there is like actually not. pointed up. And you just kind of want to work it out just like so okay. and then walk this guy back i will say this guy can also kind of drag so even like when you're done storing it when we fold it up getting it somewhere it can store otherwise you, you can start yeah dirt exactly dirt. and just check that too each time um like i kind of looked in there and there was just a little guy hanging on the edge make sure you brush that off otherwise you know what i mean it can get stuck in there and then it takes way more time to get it undone okay. which can be a pain so i'm just going to undo the rest of these guys here then and we can kind of walk through this setup together how about that and uh these guys are pretty simple and one thing uh we can maybe talk about afterwards here too i know you mentioned security was kind of a concern for you with the trailer dolly um one thing i might suggest too is getting some little locks here so you can actually end up locking at least maybe one of your tow bars here or a second one and the big one i would look at is maybe right. going to be a hitch lock here on your rv because this tell, like i've had had one on the other one with the, to the key yep that's just like that. Yep. Okay. And that way you're just getting a little bit of, I mean, any, any lock is only deterrent, but it does go a long way a lot of times of, okay. you know, okay. making sure we leave your stuff where you have it. So yeah. And then uh, I just want to bring these guys in up all the way and we'll kind of walk over putting this guy up. Now for these guys as well, um, you could end up leaving them here. They have a little bit of a rattle to them. Uh -huh. I would suggest pulling that pin, turning it, walk it right out. And that way you can store it either in your RV or your Jeep. And then this is what you end up looking with. So you don't really have anything too crazy. So you wanna go ahead and take that guy out for me and then we can uh, maybe go in the reverse order of this guy. Sweet. So real simple, um, you know, they look harder to, than they are and then you just slide them right in, turn them and then replace that pin and you're good to go. Yep. So, and then when our tow bar is not in use we can kind of bring them together here and we can bring them straight up and then you're going to have that little latch right there okay. basically you're just going to walk that up just like so then take it off to the side and uh yeah like i was telling your wife earlier this is how it's going to store it's pretty nice because it's not really adding really too much length okay. to your rv to begin with and especially with that toe like the defender or that cover becomes a great way of just protecting it on the back here which is awesome so one thing we always want to do though, when we are setting up our Jeep, um, you always want to make sure you have your emergency brake on. Um, okay. And what's that has happened with that? Right here, we're on level ground, we're in a great spot. If you were to find yourself on a slight gradient, if you're in a driveway or something, all of a sudden we might get a little forgetful and then we're catching our Jeep as it goes down. So okay. um, Understood. you could probably get a little closer than we are too, obviously, right? Because these are going to extend out as we drive forward. So if you're having that trouble, just hop back in the Jeep, make sure your tow bar's out of the way, pull forward a little bit more, have the missus kind of tell you where you're and at, put the brake back. and then okay. put the brake back on. So okay. here, we're doing it in a controlled environment. Of course, we gotta make sure we are being okay. safe as we're out on the, road, on the road. So there's that little pin for you. Yep. 
There we go, and that's locked in. So now our now our bars are in place, which is great. Do you normally? I went this way. Do you normally? Does it? Does it don't really matter. matter. Wherever you really want it, whatever's easier for you to access would probably be the way I'd go about it. Um, they're going to do the same either way. It's just I put mine on the outside because it's a little easier to get to rather than you know okay. scrounge on the okay. inside. Understood. And then we can go ahead and take our safety cables here. And that might be part of the determining factor too, right? If it's getting in the way of your clevises here, you might move it, but otherwise you're in a good spot. And then I'll let you take that guy in and that's basically gonna give us all our power. This is the pin, so. Yep, make that little guy on top. And then you just kinda wanna work it in. There you go. And as you get it into um, okay. getting it out, it can be a little easier just to kinda double hook there. Okay. But just little tips and tricks, so. Okay. But yeah, so we're all hooked up now on here other than our breakaway. Awesome. You just go easily yep. under? Just under and then clip it to that guy. There we go. We're good to go. And um, kind of walking that guy back to here, what we've done is we've taken this uh, guy right here and clipped it on. Uh -huh. Sometimes people have trouble with their hitches. Yours was good enough to go ahead and just go around that tow hook, which is great. So we're not too worried about it. I like wrapping it here though, just because I know it's extra secure. And then this is what's going to be pulling that over here. Okay. So that's the only reason we did that. So yeah, so you're all hooked up now. Really, now what we got to do is actually hop inside the Jeep and we're going to need to actually set this ready for tow mode. So why don't we grab your vehicle's owner's manual guide and we'll do that really quick. Well, I showed Larry here how to get his Jeep actually set up for uh, actually getting in the flat tow position, making sure we have no issues. Of course, let's always make sure we are using our own vehicle's owner's manual guide. That way, we're always being safe and sound out there on the roads. Larry, any last little questions you have for me or anything no, like that? No, awesome, no, no, no. cool. Well, he's also got the Demco Stay and Play Duo, so we're just making sure that that actually is right. activated inside the Jeep. We double check that with our sensors up front. And Larry here's ready to go and rock and roll, have some fun. So that's what we're all about. Well, thank Appreciate you again, Larry. It. Appreciate okay. it, and you have a good one. Okay, I will. But other than that, you know, when it comes to uh, a base plate for a Jeep, you have a lot of different options, so that's a good thing. Um, and this one's going to look good and function just as well. Now, as far as the installation goes, uh, really wasn't too bad. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, just about anything on these Jeeps uh, go together pretty easily. I will say this one was a little more challenging than some of the other brands of base plates that I've done. Um, just kind of tight to work with uh, for a couple of steps, but definitely doable and really shouldn't take up a bunch of your time. But uh, other than that, why don't we go ahead and get this installed together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the front of our Jeep and we need to remove this plastic panel. So there's going to be a total of six fasteners, four in the front, two in the back. We'll go ahead and start with the two uh, here on the back side of it. So if we look behind it, you can see one of the fasteners and we're gonna have this just on each side. So you can take a trim tool or even a flathead screwdriver, simply pry underneath the head and work the whole fastener out. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing for this one over here as well. Here at the front, we're gonna have those four uh, push pins. These are gonna be set up the same exact way as the two that we just took out. So go ahead and get these popped out. Once we get this last one off, the panel should come down. We'll lower it and set it off to the side. So now uh, behind our back bumper, we actually need to get our bumper removed. So what you wanna do is come to your fog light, unplug that, push down on the tab there and pull it out. And I wanna mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of our Jeep, we're gonna do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. But to get the bumper off, you're gonna have a total of eight nuts that you need to remove. So four on each side. So you're gonna have two on the inside of the frame rail, two on the outside of the frame rail. These are gonna be an 18 millimeter in size. So we'll go ahead and get uh, all those removed. So with all the bolts removed, we can grab our bumper beam and start to remove it. 
and we're going to have some brackets that may fall out if they do, just hold on to them. And it actually looks like we have some wiring back along through here that we're going to have to pop off this here. So I'm just going to put this back in for now, grab a, a tool and uh, get that removed so we can pull this off of these. So to get this off, I'm just prying off these little plastic fasteners here. And there's actually quite a few of them. But once I get all these off, it should release the bumper. And now we can set this off to the side uh, somewhere out of the way. So with the bumper out of the way, if you look at the uh, face plates here, our bumper actually bolted to the top uh, right hole or the top hole here on the outside corner will be a little bit smaller than the others. And so we, what we need to do is enlarge those to the size listed in the instructions. So I grab our bit here and we'll open it up. So once your hole's drilled out, since we have some bare metal now, I'm just gonna take some spray paint, just put a little layer over it just to uh, help protect it against corrosion and uh, things of that nature. Over here on the passenger side, if you look, we're gonna have some wire loom that's connected to this part of the frame. That's gonna be in the way when we go to put our base plate up, so I'm just gonna take my pry tool, pop that out and just kind of push our wiring back out of the way. Now at the next set of hands, you can take our base plate and passenger side is going to kind of slide in first and do one of these deals. And to hold it roughly into position here, I'm just going to take a clamp and clamp it in. As long as your clamp doesn't fall apart like mine did here, shouldn't be too bad. So what I did just to help keep everything lined up is I took some pry bars and kind of put them through the holes, try to get everything straight uh, and keep it that way. And then if you look on the side of your base plate, we're gonna have a hole in it and we're gonna use that hole as a template to drill out through this uh, frame uh, piece here. And I'm using a half inch and I'm gonna drill through here. That way we get some hardware in. At this point we can take our nut plate here and what I like to do is grab the end of it with a pair of needle nose uh, vice grips. It just makes it easier to kind of put into place. But a lot of times what can happen too, the nuts can have some powder coating on the threads and make it hard to kind of start. So run your bolt through and clean out the threads. Makes it a little bit easier. Uh, this one was clean so really no worries. But you're going to take your bolt and a split lock washer, put that on. Take your flat washer, then we can take the included blue Loctite, put some of that on the threads. And matter of fact, all the hardware that we're going to use to secure the base plate is going to receive some of that Loctite. The way this is going to work though, nut plate, you're going to feed that up through here and it lines up with that hole there. And we're going to line it up, take our bolt and get it started. So once you have those in place and hand tight, come back with our socket. I'm using a 19, you can also use a three quarter and we'll snug it down. Be sure to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down that hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can get one here at e-trailer or a lot of times go to your local auto parts store. They'll have one there available you can rent. So once that's torqued down, go ahead and get rid of our clamp and our pry bar. 
So I went ahead and got our safety cables on and as long as you have you know an end wrapped around your base plate and the other wrapped around part of your frame you're going to be in good shape. So that's exactly what I did. Um, and then here and there I used some zip ties just to kind of tighten everything up that way this stuff isn't you know bouncing around uh, making a bunch of noise whenever we're going down the road. At this point we're ready to get our bumper back on but I just wanted to explain this while it's easy to see. So we have these backer plates that were originally on the back side of our bumper um, and we're only going to be putting two of them back. We want to go on the outside of our uh, passenger side of our vehicle. The other one will go on the inside uh, portion here on our driver's side and reason being is uh, you know the other sides have our base plate on the back there so there's no need for an additional backer plate but that said we'll go ahead and get our bumper pushed into place and uh, get it resecured. So we'll grab our bumper beam here and make sure you get everything plugged back in. We'll line it up and slide it back into position. So I got our bumper uh, resecured, tightened and torqued like we talked about. Uh, it did fight me a little bit. I do want to mention you may have to kind of move some things around. So in our case, our safety cables kind of looped around this side first and that was interfering with the bumper. So I just changed them around, put them to the inside. Give us that clearance we need. And then on the very end, so I don't know if every Jeep will be set up like this, but on the very end, there will be a screw on that silver part, just like this one here. And so you can use a Torx bit, I believe it was a T20, to pull those outside screws out and that'll give you the clearance. And obviously this isn't going anywhere, it's pushed up so tight against our base plate, uh, it's not gonna hurt anything. So just a couple of pointers there if you run into some issues trying to get this thing lined up and put back in place. Those are some of the things to look for um, uh, if it starts to fight you a little bit. At this point, um, what you can do is take your underbody panel. There's a diagram and the instructions that you can follow to cut out some of the parts and reinstall it. That's the way that you removed it. Or um, what we're going to do is hold off on that. We're going to actually install the rest of our flat towing components like wiring, braking system, things of that nature because, you know, it's just going to give us a little bit more room to kind of work around uh, without that panel down here. So that's what I'm going to do. Once we're finished up with that, uh, we can come back to the panel, show you how to cut it and, and get it back up. So now that I have everything wrapped up in terms of, you know, my wiring, my braking system and everything else, we can get our panel put back on. So there's a diagram and instructions you can kind of lean on a little bit, um, but everyone's going to be set up a little bit different, especially depending on how you mount up your wiring and your breakaway switch and everything else. So what you can do is use that information. And what I like to do as well is kind of hold this up and eyeball it um, and just see where I need to make some cuts. You know, I'll cut some material out, test fit it. If you need to take more out, not a huge deal, we can. Um, but we'll do that. It'll probably take us a couple tries to get it fitting uh, just how we want it. With everything marked out, I'm gonna cut like we talked about. I'm gonna use a Dremel tool to cut this out. You could probably use, um, you know, a variety of different things, maybe a jigsaw or, or something like that. It's pretty thick plastic, so. But with that said, I'll go ahead and work on getting all these cut out and then we'll uh, see if it fits. So I went ahead and got our underbody panel back up in place, opposite way that we removed it. Um, like I said, you might have to kind of test fit it, make a, uh, you know, another cut. I actually did have to do that over here where our base plate is on the driver's side, kind of sticks out a little bit. So kind of an opening there to clear it. Everything's tight, but uh, this did go back up in place. And uh, honestly, I think it looks pretty decent, you know, about as good as it uh, can given the fact that we have all these new components up front now and that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Demco base plate kit on our 2018 Jeep Wrangler JK Unlimited